I want to conquer. I want to do my thing. I want to sleep with lots of women. I would never want to have multiple children with multiple women. Classic American. <laughs> what do you call them? Yogurt. Yogurt? Yogurt. I'm going to stick with yogurt. <laughs> I need only boys. That's all I want as, as children. I want two boys. I'm going to be pissed off if there's girls. My kids can talk to your kids. <laughs> oh, it's too big. Way too big. Yeah. I'll just take it. I've stopped doing that now since I got robbed. Yeah, once it's inside, the radius expands a bit. Just bury it in drugs and alcohol. It's a silly thing that, that I'm now like a drug addict. Full team of us pulled up 5.30 in the morning, all drunk. And people were bringing me donuts and stuff. It's kind of the gateway drug. It's God giving you a chance to prove who you, who, who you are. All right, Jag Hop. Well, we're gonna do that again. <laughs> Probably leave that in there. <laughs> all right, Jag Hopkins, Mate. AKA CEO of Testosterone. Good to be here. Welcome to the, the pod, welcome to Marbella. What a beautiful place. Your first time, yeah? My first time, and I'm sure I'll be back. Got everything you could want. The views. The ca- you said the cars. The cars, yeah, I was going to say the cars. I, I didn't realize, so you're in Thailand, yeah? yeah. Bangkok. Thailand, Bangkok. If you want a Lamborghini that costs 200 grand, it's going to cost you 600 grand. So luxury cars are off the menu. So anything that's like a European car or American, a- Anything that's not made in the country. Do, yeah, they, do it, they make like Teslas there? Because I know Tesla has so many factories all over. That's interesting. I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm see, not huge into many? the Teslas. I want something that runs on fossil fuels. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so not many <laughs> I want something loud and dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but we, we can get the F-150s, I believe, and the, obviously the Ford, the Ranger Raptor. So that would be my car of choice. Uh, but not for Bangkok. For Bangkok, you need a Sprinter. The funny thing is, uh, yeah, yeah truck, his truck's too big for Bangkok. Yeah, you yeah. need to just chill in the back of a Sprinter and have a driver and stuff because traffic's so bad. If you can work in the back and have parties in the back and yeah, yeah, be yeah. dating girls, you need to be in the back with the girls, like just chatting. You can't be driving in Bangkok. It's awful. Yeah. So. Well, I see that. I see like it's like a sea of mopeds when you see oh, these clips, crazy, right? Crazy, mate. And I've never been, but it, it's really like that. Yeah. It's really like that. It's really like that. But the weird thing about Bangkok feels so safe, even though Bangkok is like a... So it, feel, it can feel kind of, people think it's third world. It's super safe. Feels way safer than London. It's still got all the luxury stuff. Just everything's mayhem. There's just no order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I love it. There. There. I absolutely love I've, it. I've never, I've never visited. I'm gonna be honest. I've never really had that much. I've had friends who've lived there. I've never had that much of an urge to go to to Asia, even Southeast Asia. I, I went to Asia originally because of the beach. Yeah, the movie The Beach with Leonardo. DiCaprio. I've never seen that one. You never seen that? I'm a bit. I, I, Lee, he's a great actor. I've never seen Fantastic. that movie. Fantastic. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I was I'd obsessed with Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. when I was younger. Watched yeah. all his movies, yeah. and there's this one where he's a he's a traveler, a backpacker, and he goes to Thailand, and he does the normal stuff like um, he goes to Bangkok, he goes to the islands, but he wants more, and he finds this paradise island, this secret island. Uh, you can go there now. It's called Maya Bay. It's the actual place they shot the movie. I saw that film. I saw what the lifestyle was like. And ever since I, I watched that, maybe 14, 15, I had it in my head. Ended up out there. Interesting. Yeah. From London? No, you were not in London, near London. I'm, yes. I'm Peterborough. Okay. Peterborough, yeah. Outside so of London. Fairly close to London. Yeah. Uh, can I go Shades now? We can go Shades, shades now. Out. My, yeah. My we're going to do Shades. This is different. But Jack was big. He came in. He said, <laughs> I like wearing Shades on podcast. <laughs> I, I, I said, you know, for the beginning, yeah, no, he, because I need to grab a quick screen grab. And normally I'd say no to David. I'd normally be like, no, I'm wearing them the whole time. But I, I like David. I think David's a good guy. So I said I'd take him off. But I had to have him at some point. Hey, I like switching it up. So we'll switch it up with the Shades on the podcast. And we're having a, a little scotch. We're having a little scotch. And then a little scotch. I always oh, let, nice. I always let the guests pour. All right. In case you're trying to go hard, or in case you're not trying to go hard, I'm not trying to go hard, but, right, we've but got, I'll make your we've got a workout coming. Is that that's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little something to sip on, you there know. There we go, a little something. I might put a little bit of Red Bull with mine. Mm. Red Bull and Scotch is not Red, a good idea. Is no, that not it's not allowed. You got to sip the Scotch okay. straight. We can do the sunglasses, but we got to go, gotta go <laughs> okay. straight on the Scotch. <laughs> okay, that's a good deal. I've, I feel much better with the sunglasses on there. That's good. What's your? Uh, is it just Cheers in in England? Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. We'll go. Cheers, cheers man. Cheers. Just a sip. I'm not. I'm not taking it as a shot. I've found though that having having something to sip on, even if it's something so small that it probably doesn't actually impact us, for some reason the conversation flows a little smoother yeah. when you're sipping on a scotch. I'm feeling good already. <laughs> you don't want to give me too much of this, David. I'll be too much to handle. Trust mate. me. Yeah, the last two weeks I've been drinking too much, so <laughs> me this, will too. Be, this is my me only too. alcohol for the week. I, I'm off. I'm off booze at the moment. Apart from this. 
All right, I appreciate you. Yeah. I've also realized I can't ask people before the pod because if, and whenever I ask them before, they're like, ah, let's hold off on the alcohol. But as soon as you bring it out, once it's recording, yeah, yeah. everyone's like, just all blindside right. me. <laughs> yeah, they're like, it's I'll all just, good. I'll just take it. I'm now going to be a train wreck. I'll be going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, we, right. after this, we got a gym workout. Yeah. And then a little Muay Thai sparring. A little sparring. We'll Might have to be just boxing sparring. Okay. Just I've got a bit of a leg injury for the Muay Thai. I've not been Muay Thaiing it for much, but okay. boxing is good. Why, why do you really want to do Muay Thai? Well, here's the thing. Yeah, I suck as a boxer. My kicks, <laughs> my kicks is my whole game. Oh, shit. So we can do it, but the fact that I also haven't sparred or trained in a, a few years and I can't use kicks, oh, we can do both. We'll do a, a round. No, of I don't want to. I don't want to do a round off. of boxing. Ah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take it easy on the leg. It'd be all right. All right. We're not gonna try and rip each other's heads off. So. No, no, some light sparring. It'd some be light okay. sparring. Yeah. So you're 24. 24 years old. And look, you already have 100k on YouTube. You've I think I've heard you say you're making around like 100K a month now as well. Yeah, 100K a month. We've done 200K months. And then this month we dipped down a little bit. We had a few trips and stuff. You know how it is if you're not yes. styled in the business. It's ups and downs. But yeah, we've done a couple hundred K months back to back. But regardless, you're 24 years old, bro. Yeah. I didn't start uploading videos until I was 27 years old. I, yeah, I made money on my own through different online ventures, maybe starting at 25. But nothing, nothing significant probably until I was 29. When I was 24, I was in a complete shithead. Maybe I was starting my self-improvement journey. Yeah. I, I was a software engineer before I got into all this. But it's I see a lot of young guys get into the, the influencer game, the social media game. But a lot of them that I see are more like bodybuilders or fitness guys. They don't really put the business... I mean, there's some exceptions, like Iman Ghazi, for example, right? But like... Big G. Huge, huge exception. Yeah, yeah. Huge outlier. Yeah. He's Most, younger than me. Yes. I haven't seen guys your age have like the consistency because you've been uploading consistently for what a year now but consistently pretty consistently i need to be you can step it up a little bit i could get back in the game a little bit more a lot more consistent than i was when i was 24 okay that's good then so like what 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 made like what snapped you into like shape or like snapped you into like this is not like a game like i'm going to do this professionally because it's happened earlier for you than for most people yeah i didn't have a choice so i basically worked in sales when i was from 20, well, I worked in sales from 16, actually. I was still at school and then went to university for a year as well and dropped out. But I worked sales the whole time. And I worked sales till I was 22. And I just got to a point where I was feeling pretty low and just, I'd always had these big dreams for my life and felt like I was at a point where this is just too dull, mundane life for me. What type of sales? I was working, I was selling telephone systems to businesses in the UK. What's a telephone system? Like a like a <laughs> like a phone that you pick up and you speak into it. Oh, like an old school phone. Yeah, like an old school phone. But in the they UK, weren't, they, they weren't s- using they mobile s- phones. They use mobile phones as well, but they still for the offices and stuff. They still needed those phones. So we, I had to cold call businesses, business owners, busy business owners, and say, "Look, we're coming in. Get your new system. We'll save you a load of money." And I was doing that, and it was mind-numbingly boring and just completely shit. And I got to the point where I'd started saving money. I read the book. I read Dave Ramsey's, I think it's Total Money Makeover. I read that because so that, was, I, I, that was the first book. That was, that was one of the first. I've always read a lot of books, but I was shit at keeping hold of money. I was mm. always living pay t- paycheck to paycheck or mm. in my overdraft. I read that, started saving money, got my first 10K together, and then decided to move to Thailand. And I, went, I actually did go fitness first. I went online personal training. Because I was in decent shape, I'd always it's the, change. It's kind of the gateway drug. Yeah. It's kind of, that's how it was for me, for a lot of people. Fitness and, and, and dating, kind of like the gateway drugs that yeah. get you to entrepreneurship. 100%. So I did that, went out to Thailand, and it just wasn't working. I was overspending a little bit, having a little bit too much fun. And you were selling like through Instagram, like I was training selling programs? T- solely on Instagram, uh, training programs and coaching. Okay. For about two hundred dollars a month. Okay, and I, I was making about fifteen hundred dollars a month. Okay, and in Thailand, time. that's enough to get by. It should be enough to get by, yeah, okay. but I was I was burning through at yeah. a ferocious rate, and and also burning through my savings. So I got to a point where I had spent all my savings. I'd spent all my money for the month, and I needed cash. So I bought my. I had a high ticket program that was five k, and I bought it on my American Express to liquidate the cash. Okay. So I could pull it out of a cash point because you need cash in Thailand a lot of the time. And I had rent to pay. So I did that and I was like, I have no way of paying this back. And my American Express is crazy APR. So I'm going to get fucked if I can't pay this. And around that time, I just decided, 
because I should have been really stressed, right? Yeah. And up until this time, I've been very, very stressed. And there's just a bit of a flip, a flip of a switch. I was like, I'm actually totally at zero, less than zero, and I'm not stressed. Like, I'm just, I'm going to be happy anyway, because I know I'll be all right. If I need to get a flight home, live with my parents, rebuild, come back, no problem. If I need to get a girlfriend here and live with her for a bit so I don't have to go home, no problem. I was like, there's so many solutions to this problem, and I've done enough things in my life now to know that this isn't going to end me. So and it I seems like you realized, like, ultimate failure is not even, like, that bad. You could still be happy yeah. with, with the worst, worst, worst yeah. case. I was like, if I have nothing at all and I end up working at a bar here or a gym in Thailand, just chilling, going to the beach and having a girlfriend and, and uh, seeing some buddies and working out, then I'll be happy. Mm. So it took all the pressure off. And then at that point, I met Hamza um, at a gym, did some Muay Thai together. And he saw my life and the way I was living and who I was as a person just said, you need to get on YouTube. And at the time, I had no choice. I was like, I needed money anyway. So I just committed to posting every day. And I just started that day, the day I got back from, from speaking to Hamza. Started that day, just a video. You can watch it on my channel. It's called uh, Once Upon a Time There Was a Gorilla Named Jack. It's just a video of me walking around my little one-bed apartment in Thailand. So yeah, I did that. And then I hopped on YouTube for 150 days. And at the end of those 150 days of you nonstop were, posting. You were uploading a video every day. I was uploading a video every day for 150 days. And at the end of that, I was at, I think about 40,000 subs and I was making about 15 grand a month. It's funny because it's funny how like being okay, like being able to say, because for me it was a similar thing where I was working a job as a software engineer, which I guess it seems successful uh, like externally, but it's not, it's nothing that I wanted to do. It's what I had gotten my degree for. But ultimately what allowed me to like quit that, like let go of the safety and the security was saying, look, if I try and be a personal trainer and try and do this online stuff and I completely fail, I can move back in with my parents and I can probably apply to a shit ton of jobs and find another job as a software engineer somewhere. And that was, it's almost, it, because it seems like you're being a deadbeat on the outside mm. almost, right? It almost seems like, oh, this guy's just giving up. He's like yeah. not ambitious. But it's funny how like, it's, it's a very like stoic thing also, like uh, the stoicism philosophy, which my whole arm is just- What, what is that on your arm? Well, at the top, it's, it's Marcus Aurelius, who's like the, the godfather of Stoicism, right? And then inside, you have Julius Caesar, oh. a Roman soldier. You have like a gladiator fighting on the inside. It's all Roman. Oh, I really like that. Yeah. That is cool. But it's, it's funny how like letting yourself be free from the anxiety of failure and being okay with failure. And then for me, at least, it was like I started with very, very small steps, but like a small step can turn into a medium-sized step can turn into a big yeah, step. And yeah. then all of a sudden, you're consistently taking yeah, yeah. what would seem impossible steps a few years ago. It's all momentum. And a lot of people, I, I had this for a while, I still get it now. You put so much pressure on yourself to succeed, to be, to be the best. Yeah. Just don't worry about it. Yeah. Just enjoy yourself. Enjoy your life. Do the best that you can in the time and forget about the results. That, that's a huge mindset shift for me. Just forgetting about results. Well, a lot of the most successful thing. people care the least about the success. Yeah. A lot of times people ask me, oh, how's, how's your edge, your clothing business doing this year? And I'm like, honestly, I'd have to like pull up the numbers because my way my mind works is like, if each month we're doing like a little bit better than last, like the, how we did that month last year, like we're trending in the right direction. I don't have like all the stats on my head about the profit margin and like what the sales are at right now. I'm like, things are moving in the right direction. I'm not stressed about it. Mate, 100%. That's, that's what it's all about. When you let go of that pressure, do you're able to perform optimally in everything that you do. Yeah. There's so many people who will to ask me, you know, I'm thinking about starting a YouTube channel or a clothing business. You know, what's your best advice? And a lot of times, like, you just got to stop thinking about it, man. But yeah. If you're thinking about it, just either do it or don't do it. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you're living in purgatory. Fear is such a weird thing. Yeah. Uh, the, I, I saw a clip the other day on, on YouTube that you don't get your courage until you've done the thing you're scared of. Which is a fucked up way of courage working. You feel like you should get your courage before. Everyone's waiting to be brave before they take the jump. Yeah. But you take the jump and then you become brave. That's just how it is. Yes. And um, the fear is such a weird concept, such a weird thing. I start to see it more and more now. But the more you run into, the more you run towards your fear, the closer you'll get. The the uh, the cave you fear holds the treasures that you seek. Is yeah. the the cave you fear to enter holds the treasures that you seek. Yeah. A lot of it's like. 
getting comfortable being uncomfortable or yeah. like living in like a constant state of chaos almost, right? Like this, I have so many different things going on with the different businesses, the YouTube channel. And like, if I start to think about it at night when I'm going to bed, I'll start to get stressed. Yeah. But then, and I'm like, oh, but if we could just get this project done, this project done, this project done, then we could like chill. But like the reality is the chaos is always going to be there. And it's, you just have to be like, like, it doesn't matter. Tomorrow I'm going to wake up and I'm just going to knock things off the fucking to-do list one by one by one. And what I get done, I get done. What I don't get done, this is the next day. Yeah, I, I'd like to feel the... So oftentimes, the thing that's pushed me to uh, make big moves in my life has mm. been a feeling of fear or a feeling of anxiety because I'm not doing something right. Mm. So it's a fine line between being so relaxed that you never do anything because you're just chill, this chill guy. Yeah, I'd like to feel the fear and then let it go, but know that that has shown me where I need to operate. Yeah. It showed me I'm scared about something, I'm anxious about something that needs action. Yes. But just action instead of fear. Yeah. Not no action at all and no fear because you're chilling about it. Yeah. Then don't don't hide it, don't mask it with booze or weed or any of that stuff or sex. Sex is normally my biggest one. I just um, if I'm gonna run towards a vice, sex is normally it. But I'm trying to not do that so much at the moment. Yeah, chasing dopamine is dangerous. Yeah. And that was my vice, I think. And I needed to go through a, a phase. And I don't know about you. But that was like, like I said, so so fitness, dating, entryway, drugs. For me, it was like, I got fit. I started to get comfortable approaching girls. I got get comfortable with the dating process. Yeah. I got lost in it for a couple of years. Yeah. But the moment that I kind of reined that back in, and in my case, it was actually probably when I started dating Julia that that I had someone who was really supportive of the mission, and and then I wasn't trying to set up four dates a week and see how many yeah. girls I could hook up with. Yeah. All of a sudden. Everything, everything just like fell into the right direction, fell into the right place. But you, you have to find, maybe that's right. Maybe there's something there. Like identifying like what's like the dopamine that you're chasing. For a lot of guys who are early on, it might just yeah. be jerking off the porn, right? Yeah, yeah. And like, and it's not that hey, you can never do it again in your life because I'm not a big fan of all or nothing mindsets. But if you don't have the momentum yet, at least for me, I had to remove the, I had to remove the video games, watch the, the big three, like video games, because I used to love playing Call of Duty or like SOCOM or these old school shooters. Yeah. And I was good at them. And I got validation from that. But I was like, I have to get rid of that. I have to get rid of uh, porn. And I, then eventually down the road, I kind of had to get rid of going crazy with like the dating. And then if you get rid of the dopamine, it leaves a bit of a vacuum. You have to put it into something. Yeah. I've realized that the things you're chasing, that dopamine that you're chasing, um, whether it be sex, drugs, rock and roll, that sort of stuff I've done a lot of, and I do slide towards that with my personality. Yeah. And I actually did, um, I read Patrick Beck David's book, uh, Your Next Five Moves. Yeah. Have you ever read that? No. It's very good. Yeah. And it, at the start is all about understanding, understanding yourself and your personality. And he has a worksheet that you can do uh, where you answer a load of questions about your life. It goes all the way back into your childhood, everything you've ever understanding every intricate part of your own personality because one of the first steps to success is understanding who you actually are as a person. So I noticed I, I had a habit of self-sabotage. So I do something very, very well and then I feel like I need, I, I'm not having enough fun in my life so I need to just go and go crazy for a bit and I go on a big binge or mm. do something a bit nuts. And I did this um, quite recently, this questionnaire and I, I can see perfectly now that what you really want is to be proud of yourself. It's just much harder to do that than it is to mask it with dopamine, quick dopamine fixes. So a lot of us run there. But when you realize, when you go back into your childhood and you realize that maybe you want the attention from females because you didn't get enough attention from your mom or your dad or, and you really work through that stuff and figure out what your issues are, when you feel that coming up again, you go, okay, that, that's why I'm leaning towards doing this stuff. That's why I want to do drugs again. What was your main issue? My main issue for me is that I've, uh, looking back at my um, childhood, is when I was very young, I had a, I, I got a acting role in the States. I used to live in the States, in Boston. No. Yeah. No, that's where I grew up, bro. I used to live in, I, I lived in, in uh, I, I lived in Situate. In Situate? I lived in Situate. I grew up in Hingham, which is two towns over from that's Situate. That's crazy. How did this not come up before? So I lived there for it's two, I, I only lived there for two years. So you moved from, from, from England. From England to, to Situate, Massachusetts. Situate, Massachusetts. For two years. And back again. But when I was there, because world, I was bro. an English kid, yeah. I got an acting role in a, in a few commercials and stuff. And I felt a little bit like a superstar. Okay. I got paid more money than I'd ever known what How to do. How old were you? I think it was only $1,000, but that was crazy. I was nine. Okay. 
So I, I got paid a thousand dollars and I had this trailer at the at the commercial and people were bringing me donuts and stuff <laughs> and looking after it's me. It's you in Massachusetts. So ever from then, I was like, wow, this is what it feels like to like have a bit of success. And I'd always then heaped on myself a lot of pressure mm. around achieving more and more of that yep. from a very young age. So ever since I was about nine years old, I, a childhood kind of ended for me and it was all about, in my head, since nine, success. So you feel like a failure success. after that. Yeah, I was like, and then I was doing a lot of acting auditions and not landing roles and... When I came back to the UK, I wasn't special anymore. I wasn't the English kid in America. So a lot of that I had to work through. And then I found it was harder to, uh, there must have been a point, probably around 18, where it was harder to go through that and keep facing rejection and trying to build that success than it was to just bury it in drugs and alcohol, which is where I went down. And I've just recently realized that, that basically taking the pressure off me having to be successful is... What, what I need to do. And if I have days where I feel like I'm going to run back to doing drugs and alcohol or go crazy and go on a binge, then um, just to chill for a minute, just to read a book and chill and, and just lock myself away in my bedroom for a bit and, and just hang out for a day and just let it all blow over until the next day and then look at things through a clear lens again. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's very profound, actually. For me, it was a similar thing. I think a lot of people need to search their childhood a little deeper because yeah. we don't want to think about these things, right? It's, it's, that's why we mask it because we don't want to, yeah. uh, subconsciously we're, we're hiding it from ourselves because you're, then you're saying, no, but I peaked when I was nine. That means I'm a loser now. Like for me, <laughs> yeah. it was like, for me, it was basketball. Yeah. Cause I was a, a great basketball player in the States. I play, well, they call called AAU. It's kind of uh, whatever. It's a high comp high level competition. But, th but then my high school coach, like, he was so hard on me. And I think it's because he knew I was good, but he, he like, destroyed my confidence, right? And it was something that I always, like, I thought girls think it's cool that I'm an athlete, you know, I'm friends with all the other athletes. And then, like, my last couple of years in high school, which I, I don't know what you call it in the UK, is it? Uh, we call it secondary school. Secondary school. Yeah. before or, or university. sixth form, sixth form. That's before university, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. Um, I felt like a complete loser because then, like, my last two years, I wasn't getting, like, the minutes, you know, I wasn't on the starting lineup and that was always the thing. Maybe that was my acting for what, what it was to you. Yeah. And then through college, I was like stoner, stayed in my room, played video games. Yeah, I still played basketball, but didn't feel worthy of women, didn't really like myself. Yeah. And it wasn't until after college, I was living in, uh, in Spain, actually in Madrid with Dave Perota. I call him the homie Dave. He, did, yeah. he, he does uh, dating advice videos as well. And I read a book that was called, I don't remember what it was called. I think it, was, it may have been Neil Strauss's second book. It was his first one's The Game that everyone knows, yeah. and he has won The Truth. And he goes more into like his, his trauma and the things that hurt him, and it made me think a lot. And me and Dave sat down, that's when I kind of like went backwards and realized, wait, it's because this stupid fucking like basketball coach that I feel like an idiot. Yeah. And I think a lot of times if people can find that moment, like you were able to and I was able to, it can help the momentum start to build more rapidly because you can almost let go of it a little bit and be like, that's a silly thing that, that I'm now like a drug addict or I'm now like yeah. feel like a complete loser because of my high school yeah, basketball that coach. little thing that's just culminated and yeah. because you never think about the problem, you just have the emotion. It's, yes. it's all about being stoic. Yes. That's exactly what it is, learning how to deal with emotion. I get an emotion of wanting to feel happy or wanting to feel fulfilled from something like drugs and alcohol because it's quick. And then understanding why you want that and then figuring out the best ways around it. It's uh, been a much healthier way of de dealing with it for me. I'm still, I'm still doing my thing. I'm just... Uh, well, no, but if it's good, you also recognize time is when, like, your mind's starting to, like, uh, sabotage a bit. Yes. And then you say you take a day and not put pressure. For me, I, I literally... What we're going to do after this, we're gonna, I'm going to go jump in the sea. Yeah. For me, that's the thing that, like, when I get into really tough mindsets yeah. that, like, you're trying to... You, you catch yourself... I know I'm in them because I'm trying yeah. to think my way out of them or I'm, like, picking at my fingers a little bit. Yeah. And I'm not able to stay on, put on a task. That's when I'm like, let's either go take the dogs for a walk or I need to still go by myself and just jump in the ocean. Perfect. Yeah, that, that's exactly the same thing I do. Because otherwise, I, I know that when you're on a business grind or any entrepreneurs that are listening, you can feel like it's impossible to take a day off. Like any day off would be so bad. But for me, I've figured out if I don't take a day off where I just lay in bed or watch something, a movie, or just really chill out and get my head straight, then I'll take two weeks off in some form of chaos. Yeah, you need to find what can be a retreat. For me, it's like yeah. every night at the end of the night, even if I get done working at midnight, I need to sit down and watch like one like episode of something on Netflix. I just before I go to bed, I need to feel like I relaxed. Like I just it's like a mental thing. I yeah. need to feel like I did not work for even if it's thirty minutes, and then I can wake up the next day and work hard. If I go to bed after only working, I like 
I can't, I don't know, it doesn't work. Messes with your mind and yeah. you wake up the next day, you feel like you haven't really rested. Or... Yeah, then I'm going to wake up the next day and not want to work. So something I've noticed about you is that you flex a little bit. So you like, the, so you're wearing the Gucci shirt now, you know, you, you like to show. Dior, Dior. Dior. <laughs> I'm not, uh, I have some designer <laughs> stuff. Obviously, I'm not, I don't have any Dior. <laughs> not cute, <kidding. laughs> <coughs> you're in Marbella. You gotta go down the down yeah. the strip. I bought, I bought some Louis V shoes a couple weeks ago. Yeah, you got houses now. I haven't got any houses. <laughs> no, I'm more you're doing the, it right. The cars, you're the houses, doing it maybe. right, man. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, like if you take a first class flight, you'll post it. You know, if you yeah, go yeah, shopping yeah. to uh, yeah, yeah. to Dior, let's say yeah, you, yeah. You, you'll you'll probably post it. I've stopped doing that now since I got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's another story I want to get into. Yeah. But but how how come you like to flex a little bit? I'm not, and I'm not hating on it. Oh mate, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, hate on it or not, I don't, I don't mind. For yeah. me, it's the first time I've ever been able to do this shit. Okay, I've not had money before, so I got money, and I feel like uh, it's a, it's great for your brand. It's and I remember never seeing other people flex and ever feeling bad about it. Hmm. I always saw other people flex and just thought, fuck, that's so cool. I, I want to do the same thing. It always inspired me in a way to see other people getting that stuff. So I just wanted to do the same thing. And, and from what the feedback I get from people, they seem to like it most of the time. Yeah, I think people can take it different ways. Yeah. I've, I've noticed on my YouTube journey as I've gotten more successful. Because when I started, I was in you know 400 square foot apartment in Boston, riding a bicycle around. And then as the success came, you know, yeah. to the house, to the car, to the next house, to the next car, you start noticing, or at least I started noticing I got a greater degree of hate comments because yeah, some yeah. amount of people they lose the relatability and maybe there's no progress in their life and then they see the progress yeah. of someone else's and it, it, it kind of causes like a mental like yeah. shut, shut down and they have to reject it. Um, but those people are maybe a bit hopeless anyway. I think the, the problem is, and this is for all hate, it all comes from a place of insecurity. So you find someone who's living their best life, doing their best things, they're never going to turn around and hate on you for flexing or hate on you for a video. So I always feel uh, sorry for the people that hate because you must have not much going on in your own life. And I think if you are hating, have a look, just turn around and have a look at yourself and try and figure things out because it's not a nice place to be. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I get it as well. If yeah. I feel stuck in my life yeah. and I see someone else who's really killing it yeah. and I'm at a stuck point, I feel the same way. Yeah. I, don't, I don't say it, but in my head I'm like, God, fuck them. Fucking why is things not going well for me? Yeah. I understand that. You got to understand that. So I understand yeah. that and yeah. I see the hate and I understand that. So I just wish them... I wish them well, and I hope they can feel some level of success or at least progress in their lives and, and get through that sort of stuff. Yeah, whenever, whenever there's like a really, really aggressive hate comment on my channel, I, either I'll just do like the shadow ban, which is like the best feature on YouTube. You can say like hide user from channel because they can keep commenting and they won't know, but, but no one else can see it. If you haven't done that, that's a little tip. I, I, I actually, um, I, I take, I've taken a break from reading comments oh, okay. at all. It's a healthy habit, probably. Yeah, yeah. I, I stay away from the comments. Um, as much as I loved, uh, there was a time when I first started YouTube mm -hmm. where I was really in the comments and it felt like a great community. Um, it gets to a point where, you c for me, I don't like reading 20 bad m comments about myself every mm -hmm. day. So I prefer to leave it like you get the content, we'll communicate through the content or live streams or whatever, but the comments are just where they're meant to be. So I, and this is something Joe Rogan says also, by the way. He says he'll never read a single comment. And maybe I should do it, but I put so much time and effort into the, into the creativity of the videos and the production that I, I like seeing the feedback. Yeah. Um, the it, point I was making, well, for me, I like it. That being said, sometimes you see some negative hate comments and it's like, yeah, maybe it's not the best, the best like, healthy like, input for your brain. Yeah. And, it's, and it's always a vocal minority, right? But yeah. you can read 100 comments, yeah, 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 three yeah. can be bad, and those They're, are the ones they you're, stick and they stick in your head the rest of the day. You think, wait... And maybe sometimes there's some legitimacy, and maybe sometimes yeah. there's some good constructive feedback. Um, my point is, I either I either give them the shadow ban, which is satisfying, because I'm like, this guy's gonna keep commenting in like the dungeon yeah, no one else can see. Know about it. <laughs> <laughs> or two, depending on the comment, if I can tell like the person's like, like if they're hating on like my wife or like my body or something, I'll just say, hey brother, like it seems like you're in a tough place. Keep your head up. And yeah. nine out of ten times, I come back in 20 minutes and the comments deleted. And I'm hoping that that gave some awareness to that person yeah. that like, hey, this is the answer is not to like try and tear other people down. The answer yeah. is to like, okay, how do I actually make my, build my life to something I'm proud of? Like exactly, yeah. exactly. Because a lot of these people, I mean, we don't know their lives, but a lot of these people are probably torn down their whole life yeah. from, from people around them. They just want to give it back a little bit. Maybe parents tore them down just every, every day or something. So you, you don't know what they're dealing with other people. So I, I, I pay it very little attention. No. My, my world is very much a bubble of hand-selected characters that, 
I love being around. My my inner circle is is very well selected, and I make sure I spend time only with people that add to my life. Uh, how has that process looked for you? Have you had to like explicitly cut certain people off? I think you know who 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 who's good and who's bad for you. But a lot of the time, I don't place any blame on anyone else because it's all down to me. At the end of the day, I control my life and who I hang out with. So I'm never going to blame someone else for me doing bad. Mine happened very naturally because I ended up alone in Thailand. I think that's one of the most, I, I always say, and whenever guys ask me for advice in person, I usually ask them where they grew up, where they're living now, and almost always it's the same place. And I always say, look, maybe you're not going to think this is practical, but you should move where you are. It removes your, um, actually, so you know Alex Ramosi, right? Yeah. yeah. He was talking about this recently. He's like, you see uh, drug addicts who are drug addicts um, where they live, they go to a rehab, they get clean for a week, they go back to the environment they were in, they're drug addicts again. You take all these, uh, I think they were Vietnam War veterans who like got addicted to... Uh, 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 morphine. Uh, yeah, morphine, right? Yeah. And a lot of them came back, very few of them are drug addicts. They mm. changed the environment. So yeah. we all have different triggers and different um, subconscious habits, and we even tie our identity yes. to, to the environment we're in. When I moved from Boston to Texas, my trajectory went from here to here. Yeah. Because you can now actually be the person you want to be without feeling like, yeah, but what about that, you know, that ex-girlfriend who's like looking at my social media or like those three dudes from college who are probably thinking this guy's fake. It, you're able to free yourself from all judgment and you also lose all the triggers. And I feel like, and then for you, it's probably going to Vietnam. I, know, I, keep, I feel bad mixing up Vietnam and Thailand. They're next to each other, to be fair. Classic America. <laughs> you went to Thailand, to Bangkok. Yeah. And it seems like that was a similar step for you. Yeah, I went to Bangkok and then to Koh Samui was the first place I lived. And you're exactly right. It's having people around you and becoming whoever you want to become. So and when I was there, all they knew was the fact that I was some guy who was trying to do it, stuff on Instagram, doing fitness, and I was in shape and I didn't drink and I didn't do drugs. And that's all they knew. So that's who, they, who I was. Whereas uh, friends back home would know me as, a, as my whole life growing up. So, so you went from like addict Jack to... Gorilla Jack, we'll call it. Yeah, that, that, that was basically my transformation. And yeah. that started in the UK before I, I, I was no longer. I've never really said I was a huge addict. Like I was not, I was very high functioning. I was never sort of face down in, in any alleyways. But yeah. I was, if you see some videos of me, I was really fucking skinny and doing some, <laughs> doing some fr <laughs> frightful things. But um, yeah, I think when you move, you get that new perspective on life. And you can always go back. Like I've reconnected with friends I had from home. And yes. now I'm a new person. They're a new person. Yes. And man, it's so good to see them and reminisce about old times and the things we've done. So I don't regret it. But it's, uh, and, we, and they're all changing for the good now as well. You see your friends get inspired by you making the journey. That's one of the big things for me. It really fulfilling to see my friends that were similar to me turn their lives around and want to do something better because they've seen someone else do it that they knew. Well, those are people who are open to it. Again, I always think like a lot of people, people are either like open to changing, open to taking the advice or they're, they fall into more of the hater mindset. Right. Yeah. But obviously some people can be held. That's a, and that's a personal, because I, after I quit the software engineering career, I, I, I did actual like personal training in a gym for a few years and you start to realize, obviously I learned sales through that, but you also start to realize people, someone needs to be in what you'd call like the pre contemplation phase. They need to at least be like starting to think about changing in order to change. You can't take someone who's like, isn't at that point, and it doesn't matter what you tell them, what you expose them to, what they see, until their mind's open to that, nothing happens. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing that with my brothers at the moment. I'm trying to um, sort of brainwash them a little bit into my way of thinking, because yeah. I'm now speaking to my brothers that have just come out of two years, like their whole life's worth of schooling. Yes. And then my second brother has just finished university. Yes. So they've certainly got some views and opinions that have been bred into them by the system that mm -hmm. I'm trying to eradicate. But I'm trying to do that in a way for anyone with brothers. I'm trying to do that in a way of leading the path. You must become an older brother that so they can respect. Because I notice even when I tell them something, they still want to argue or, or talk back to me or they, yeah. they don't think it's cool. But I notice they do it when I'm not around. Yeah, so that's... <laughs> it goes in. So here's the... Because uh, uh, when I met Julia, she had just finished her getting her master's in therapy. So that means she went through even university, but then another, I don't know if it was full four years, but another s several years of schooling. And it's funny because she definitely at that point bought into very much, like we talked about on the pod I did with her, into mm. a more like traditional, I don't even say traditional, but like newer liberal yeah, values. Yeah. Got you. And, and it, again, it's, it wasn't like her whole identity. So, in the, and if someone's beliefs aren't their whole identity, I think relationships can still work. Obviously the problems if someone's like so diehard. But I noticed that over time, even if she'd argue things with me, 
Then later I'd hear her on the phone with her mom and she'd be arguing what I was arguing to her to her mom. Does that make sense? Yes. So like even yes. though so if I'm arguing yes. A versus B, yeah. then she goes to her mom who definitely believes B and now she's arguing A, the same point, the same perspective gotcha. I was arguing. And that's so in my head I know, okay, she's not gonna give me the full satisfaction yeah. Yeah. of of saying yeah. like you're right and I'm wrong. But but it goes her in. views are changing over time. I mean, the same way my views change. We all, all of our views develop and change over time. But I think that's interesting to, to, yeah. to like, that's how you can observe if, if it's going yes. in or not. So I see them doing things that I've said they should do, they didn't want to do. And then we got- They're I've, not going to give you the satisfaction. No, they wouldn't. They, <laughs> they, they never would. They're still <laughs> bastards, the two of them. Um, I do love them. And I've got them signed up to boxing now. They're both boxing together twice a week. They go to a personal trainer who's teaching them how to box. Um, so that's good. And they're going in the gym as well. It's just- when you're young, I think their age, the best thing, just chill for a bit and get yourself in really good shape. So it's, you've, got, you've got a long life, you've got a long time to be in business and do various different things, but get your, get your head right and your, and your body right and be someone, demand respect from people. The quickest and easiest way to do that as a young man is to fight, is to get yourself boxing, to win a boxing match, to win Muay Thai fight, to do MMA, because then I can respect an 18 year old or I can respect, in, in Thailand we have 13, 14 year old fighters who get more respect from most men there because they've had 200 fights, yeah. which is crazy. And as soon as another guy sees that, you instantly get respect. So a lot of guy, young guys are like, oh, no one respects me. They feel real lost. The quickest and easiest way to get respect is put yourself in the cage because you'll battle some serious demons on the way there. Yeah, it teaches you discipline as well. Yeah. St uh, physical strength, obviously. How did that change your life? Not just... Uh, Training in boxing in Muay Thai because I trained I trained in Muay Thai for in Boston for two years preparing for a fight then moved to Texas and I honestly I, I there's stints where I've picked it back up for a few months at a time but it's it's been tough for me to I just don't have the free time aside from like lifting to prioritize it and I'd yeah. like to with the businesses but that's something I still I'm not gonna say regret but it's something I still like to do or wish that I had done was to actually have competed in a fight how did how did the fight itself change. I would say you. I would say it's you've got to do it 100%. Like f find a date, stick to it. When that date comes, you'll feel tremendous pressure. And I felt tri I've fought three times um, competitively. Uh, is that right? One boxing. So I had my first boxing match in a in a in an arena um, for this thing called white collar boxing in the UK. It's where yeah. they do a charity event. Yeah. All your friends and family come to watch. I did that at 18, and I lost on points, and that was soul crushing. Um, having that defeat in front of people. And then it took me a while to get back in the ring, but I then went for MMA. And I had an MMA fight, uh, which is on my YouTube channel, you can find it, uh, which I won second round submission. And the beautiful thing about fighting is there's a date coming, you've got something to work towards, you're absolutely scared, and you have to go through it anyway. And you, you deal with tremendous pressure. And the payoff for that, for those weeks and weeks of pressure, the weeks and weeks of training, hard work, sticking on a diet, feeling so scared when you go in there, is you get the most incredible feeling I've ever felt in my life. I was high, like I was on drugs, for at least two months mm -hmm. after winning that. Because the first fight I'd lost, so I'd felt very down for, for a long time. And then after that win, that MMA win, my God, I was like Superman. I broke my foot in that fight, didn't even feel it. Partied all night. Woke up next morning, happy, happiest man in the world. Oh, foot's, foot's a bit swollen. Foot's, foot's double the size it should be. Let's go down to hospital. Oh, yeah, foot's broken. No problem. Easy. Like you just get, you get this confidence. You get this feeling that you can do anything. And it's uh, yeah, it changed my life for sure. The f that, that MMA fight was just off the back of me going down quite a dark path of drugs and alcohol in university. And that was the thing that snapped me out of it that got me totally clean. No smoking, no drinking, no drugs, nothing. Uh, training for that fight and then winning that fight was the ultimate reward. So it's about, again, it's about the journey there, yeah? It's about everything, all the work leading up to it. Oh, it's all about the journey. It's yeah. all about the journey. That's what, this uh, robbery in, that we just had in Ibiza, we got robbed and uh, I was a bit upset for a minute. I got all my cool stuff taken. I <laughs> spent loads of money on cool stuff, loads of cash gone. And then you realize it's just a story to tell. You've done it with your boys. I had a great group of boys there. Um, my, my network's actually from my network, New Elite. Mm. A lot of the boys that I hang out with now, I met online through my network, mm. which is incredible. We are now very, very close friends, all on the same sort of mission. But we were there together and it just showed heart. Uh, everyone got a chance to show some heart. We went and tried to track down our stuff. We went on little missions to find air tags and 
iPads that have been found in various different apartments and stuff around Ibiza. So you found some of the things. Oh, we knew exactly where our stuff was. Yeah, we went and staked out a house. Did uh, you, staked did you out get some of it back? No, we got nothing back. Police couldn't help. So knew- when you staked out the apartments, no one came in or out? We staked out the apartments. It was an apartment block. And we couldn't figure out. Oh, it's too big. Way too big. Yeah, once it's inside, we questioned the, the, a few people. the radius expands a questioned bit. Questioned yeah. a few people it came out. So none of them was in houses. And we just couldn't get anything out of anyone. No, mm. none of them was in houses. Mm. Uh, when we first got to the house and it had been robbed, we noticed that there was a set of AirPods that had flashed up a couple miles down the road. Went there, full team of us pulled up, 5.30 in the morning, all drunk. Mm. And uh, there's luckily there was no one there. Otherwise, I think we would have gotten in big trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's it, I, I say to the boys now, I'm not upset about it anymore. We got a story to tell. We got a chance to bond together as brothers. It's all just about the journey. It's just stuff. We get it all back. Yeah. yeah. It sucks. Easy. It sucks, but oh well. Oh well. Say la vie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but that's <laughs> life. Life, uh, things suck, right? Yeah. And you can't control that. From time to time, some really shitty things happen. Yeah, the shitty things are exactly what you need to happen. Yeah. That's the thing. Everyone's yeah. trying to avoid shitty things. Yeah. The shitty things are exactly what makes you a, a man that people want to be around. Mm. It's the guy with the stories. Mm. It's the guy that's nearly died, but not quite died, that everybody admires. Mm. It's the things that you come back from. It's, it's God, in, in my mind, it's God giving you a chance to prove who you, who, who you are, who you should become. Why do you deserve a good life? Because he's given you this challenge and you faced it like a man. Yeah, I think, that's a, I think it's hard to think that way, but I think... How I started thinking was like, hey, if something seems like cool and exciting for me to do, that's the path I'm going to take. And that's always the path I'm going to take. Right. That, and that, that yeah. the first divergence was like quitting that software job. But from then, I've always whenever I'm in a decision in my life, you know, like a branch in the road, I've always now erred on the side. Of, OK, what seems like it's going to be a bit more exciting, obviously within reason. What seems like it's going to be a bit cooler and more exciting. Yeah. Let's launch that business. Let's, Let's that make one. that video. Let's go shoot that scene. Let's go on that vacation. Let's go. I don't even know when we were hiking when I was out here with uh, Jay Wallace Sterling and we were hiking, we were, you know, way up high in the mountain. We saw like a, a, a little lake and we we're like, we got to get to that lake. And there was no path there. So we're like fighting through thorns for like hours just to get to this damn lake. And was it worth it? I mean, yes, it was, but just because yeah. it sucked, yeah. it wasn't uncomfortable, but it was worth it just to have that, that, that bonding moment together yeah, yeah. in that story. Exactly. Yeah. Like, do you really think that we're made? To, as men to fucking sit there doing this all day on our phones that's what most masculine life is now for most guys mm. is sitting on their phone looking at other people live mm. that's not how we were meant to live mm. we we're meant to just go out there you get one chance around around the globe I know you get more than one because we go around the globe every year but yeah. you get one t- time on this planet make the most of it do the exciting shit take away all the fake rules that you put on yourself so many people have fake rules and boundaries for themselves Things that they think they can and can't do because of... Like what? For an, an example, a lot of people will just put themselves in a box of like um, around security. So they'll go straight for a 50k a year job and they'll feel they can't do anything else because yeah. it's unsafe. Yes. And it's all self-imposed rules. They yeah. don't know how the world really works. If you look at somebody that can get on a yacht, a mega yacht, and they can afford that, yeah. and they can afford everything they want. You've got to figure out that there's something in the game that you don't know. Yeah. There's some part of the game that you're not playing right. Yeah. And understand that putting yourself in that job, that security, is the exact way to never have that freedom. Well, it goes back to what we said, I think. Right? You have to kind of embrace ultimate failure. The worst, worst, worst case, you have to say, yeah, that could happen, and that's all right. Yeah. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm going to work tirelessly, tirelessly every day so that does not yeah. happen. Yeah. That's not the plan. I'm going to try and make failure impossible just based on like sweat equity and what I'm doing. But if it happens, it happens. Yeah. So if you don't accept that, you, you won't quit that job. No. Because yeah. you'll feel, uh, and I actually think to be just flat, broken, free, like just There's go free into that. Yeah, no, just be flat, broken, free, just be a bum. Like it's better than well, just. Well, then you're not worrying about <laughs> yeah. all, this, all, the, all the investments you yeah. have, the stock market you, you going down. You don't have down. to worry about you any worry of this about stuff. 20K stuff getting stolen. You can check out if you want and just go and live in the mountains. No, if, yeah. And I've always, not that I'm, oh, that I'm like okay with going back to being broke, but part of me is like, there's some simplicity. If something so terrible happened, there's some, there's some peace in that simplicity. There is. There's peace in wherever you want to find it. Yeah. So I heard you once say, on a pod, if you were born in a past life, you'd be a conqueror. I did say that. There's a there's a lot of different. I'm curious. There's a, there's a lot of different eras. There's no such thing as a conqueror really these days. I don't know. Maybe 
you really want, you probably go to some some tribes in Africa and maybe it's still going down. I don't think you want to do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a modern day conqueror. What I meant by that, and, and in my head, I was getting a lot of uh, people talk to me about the fact that I sleep with a lot of girls and stuff and that I have to be totally dialed in and biohacking and shit. And uh, I, I just say back to that, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a conqueror. And the conquerors that you've seen, Alexander the Great, um, he's literally the only one I can think of right now. <laughs> but um, any conquerors that you've seen in the past were not biohacking. They were just living life and they were doing their thing and they were doing what we were made to do, which is reproduce and have a lot of women. And uh, I'd like to play my life that way, like a conqueror. I want it to be fun. I want it to be adventure. I want to conquer. I want to do my thing. I want to sleep with lots of women. That's what I want to do. I don't care about biohacking all the way, that like doing all this crazy stuff because I know I, I can function without. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree in terms of like getting obsessed with things like biohacking. Um, sleeping with lots of women, I am toning down a little bit because it takes a lot of energy. Well, no, it's like we said, life's priorities. And, yeah. and if you prioritize that above business or above friendship or above travel, yeah. it's not good. It's no, I, I think, again, I think it is a relatively healthy thing to go through that phase. I don't think I'd be who I am if I didn't. But for me, it, it was a phase. And even if I was somehow to end up single again now, don't get me wrong. The first few months may be a good time, but yeah, it's not a. Uh, there's something to be said about being like a disciplined man in, in, your, in different areas of your life, having certain boundaries for yourself, I think. Um, but this is something me and you verbally sparred a bit when, when, we, when I was on the... Uh, I, I do remember that. Uh, on I, I do on remember the stream that. I did on yeah. your channel. And I've actually spoken with this about with uh, multiple people. Because it came up with Jay Waller. Yeah. Came up with Sterling Cooper. And for me, I would never want to have multiple children with multiple women because... A and I'm, I'm gonna I want you to try and convince me. Okay, I want you okay. to try and convince uh, me right. because for me, it would just lead to the, the upside is like what it gives me an ego boost that I have a bunch of kids. That's not like a realistic thing that's adding value to the world or to my life. And I'm not gonna be present in my kids' life, so they're not gonna develop as optimally as they could. And even I got I think Jay Waller is starting to admit, okay, it's probably not optimal for the kids. Um, they're like because there are arguments like, well, you can look at like a deadbeat father. That's the average father. I'm like, yeah, but I could also be. Like a super high value yeah, guy yeah, who's present in my dad. Yeah. Like we're not compare. Let's not compare like average to worse. Let's compare like what's most optimal yeah. to uh, to what we're talking about. So for me, it's like it would cause anxiety. It's gonna introduce no matter how you try and splice it. I've never seen a guy with multiple women. It, every all of them will admit, yeah, she's not really happy right now. I'm traveling right now, bro. Yeah, she's kind of pissed. I'm hanging out with this girl. So it never will not hurt the intimacy between you and that woman. And that will always have a negative impact on the kid's development. That's my view. And on top of that, I would just be really anxious knowing that, like, but now I got to deal with this fucking girl next. Oh, bro, fucking wife number three is hitting oh, me up Jesus. now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but try and convince me. I've, um, I, I, I'm not totally sure that I'm convinced myself. <laughs> okay. I'm not having any children yet, and I don't know. I think a lot of times, when it, for me now, the idea of having one settling down at my age is, is not, not a great idea because you grow so much. Well, here, yeah, I'm ten, I'm ten years older than yeah. you. I guess is the X factor. So, so for me, is I, I I like to see multiple women or have multiple girlfriends or whatever girls that I see because uh, I'm young mm -hmm. and I can yeah. and I'm honest with them and they seem to, in in my head, it seems to make things better. Mm. So I've found women that seem to behave better and also seem to be more into me because they know there's somebody else. At your stage. At my stage. I agree with that. So, but w when it comes to having children, if I find a girl that I really, really love and she's amazing and I want to have a family with her, then I'll have a family with her. But if I accidentally have a family with some other people as well, I'm not going to run away from it. I think a lot of times if you don't do it optimally. I think you're right. Mm. If you want to optimally raise a family, I don't think a man should so much be in the household, to be honest with you. I think he should be away a lot of the time working and come back to see his kids. I don't think he should totally be around the household all the time. Well, that's something else I would disagree with. I, I, well, around the household can mean different things. Yeah. I think you want to, like, we all know, like, you want to, if your kid has, like, I want to be at every, like, sporting event my kid has, right? Because I know I was, my dad was all my, all my basketball games, all my football games. I'm out there trying to make him proud. Yeah. And I think for the kids whose dads were not there, that's 100% negative impact on them. I, that doesn't mean you have to be fucking changing their diapers and yeah, like yeah. painting their painting shit. their fingernails yeah, or yeah, like yeah. or coddling no. them all day. But I do think or at least for me, I'm gonna be like very present in their lives. That makes sense. 
I can understand that. I haven't had any children yet, so yeah. I don't know. But yeah. in my head, yeah. I think being uh, keeping that mysterious aspect of being the father that's out there winning wars, a lot of times you'll become a much bigger idol in your kids' lives when you're not there because of their imaginations. And as long as you're consistent, so they're not worried and they don't feel unloved. So they still get their face time with you at a certain time. They see you every month at, on this day for a week or whatever, and you go when you do something special together. In my head, a lot of times families and fathers, because they're not in maybe a position to, to be so free, spend a lot of time with their kids without really doing anything. Yeah. And they spend a lot of time where their kids see them, their dads not being great examples. They see their dad drinking or having issues at home and shouting at their mum or whatever, and it doesn't help them grow up. Whereas if a dad's away doing his business, but when he comes back, he's present. And you know you see your dad every month, and that, mu that week is amazing because your dad fully teaches you life lessons and he's got things planned out and he does all this stuff with you. In my head, that seems a lot more manageable as a father than, than to be around them every day and slip up and let them see you lose your cool or whatever. That's my sort of thinking of it. All right, we'll, we'll have the conversation again in, in 10 years. When we've got kids, when <laughs> yeah. we've got kids, yeah. when, whenever that may be, when we've yeah. got kids, we'll have a chat about it. My, well, well, my kids can talk to your kids and be <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, my dad only sees me once a month. Uh, <laughs> I like it that way. <laughs> yeah, but again, I, th I still think that's fallen into like, the logical fallacy of like, let's compare like average to this. And I would agree yeah. that that setup would be a lot better than the average dad. Yeah. But I think there's a more optimal path. That's interesting. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Maybe when I have children, yeah. I won't be able to leave them. Maybe I'll love them so much that I will never be able to go away again. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not foreseeing that because I don't know how it feels. Yeah, I'm probably a year away from having my first kid, and I, if I'm being honest, also I have no idea how I'm going to feel in a yeah. year. Right? And even when me and Julia talk about it, we're like, we're kind of like, ah, do we have two kids? Do we have three kids? How many? Kids? And I'm like, really? I think we just need to go one at a time because we have no idea. Right now, she wants three. I want two. Bro, we could be three and I could be like, I want three more. She could be like, I'm done. So I feel like it's going to be such a, a mindset shift once you've brought another living human being into the world that uh, I think that's something we can 100% agree on is until we're at that point, I don't think we'll fully, whatever we say now might be thrown out the window yeah. times 100 at that point. Yeah, we don't know. I, I don't know because I've not had them, but I did have a dream. Yeah. I, so I've always wanted... Uh, I've always wanted to have boys mm. ever since I was younger. Same. And the idea of having girls was so frightening to me, just like horrifically frightening. I was like, I need only boys. That's all I want as, as children. And I had a dream a couple of months ago that I'd had a girl, a baby girl, and I was pushing her in a pram, in a, in a pram, uh, uh, around, a, around a, a shop. A stroller. A stroller for, that, for, for you Americans. Yeah, we call it a pram or a push chair. A push chair. <laughs> Jesus, it sounds like a wheelchair. A push chair. But it's similar, I guess. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's a little wheel <laughs> wheelchair for children. It's yeah. basically what it is a before pram. they can walk yet. Yeah. Um, but oh, the British words sound so proper. Yeah, they ah, do. Pushing down the pram. <laughs> Push it down the road in the pram. <laughs> but I had this daughter and I, I looked at her in, in my dream and I felt an amazing warmth and a, a feeling that I'd not felt before of like a happiness, contentment that made me curious to, to see what it would be like to have girls so I predict I'll probably have a girl actually uh, when I end up having children based on that dream but it was the most wonderful feeling I was no longer scared of having girls so I, th I feel like this is like the, the theme of this conversation is like accepting the thing that you're afraid of because yeah. I have it a real I've also always wanted I've, so I grew up with me and a brother right yeah. and I've always like I want two kids I want two boys I'm gonna be pissed off if there's girls I just I, I want and it is important to me to like be able to mentor another man like from birth yeah or another baby turned boy turned man but i also came to a place that was like look if i have three daughters i have three daughters and i'm gonna love those girls yeah and help them develop into yeah. like into like the best the women that they can be yeah and that's that you know so you get we don't know it's when you try this is like another stoic thing yeah there's certain things you can control there's certain things you have like a limited amount of control over uh so like you're preparing for your 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 fight right you can train. You have yeah. some control over the yeah. outcome. Yeah. You don't have full control. Yeah. There's things you have full control over. I can wake up today. I can have you know my greens powder. I can go jump in the sea. Yep. I can work for eight hours. There's things you have the limited degree of control over. Yeah. A fight, for example. And there's things you have no control over. Yeah. Having a child, unless you decide. So I know there's probably some genetic yeah, like IBF genetic or things. Genetic mutations or whatever. Yeah, you can like choose different things now. But for most people, I don't know you don't. That. Yeah, I have I have friends who've talked about it. Um, I've discussed it with Julia, but I feel that it should happen fully naturally. Yeah. God, That's where I'm at now, at least. God will give you what you need. Yeah, yeah. He'll give you what you need, yeah. not what you want. It would be tough, though, having a kid with, like, uh, 
serious health issues. That would be very tough for, be very for tough. anyone. Mark. But again, that maybe is God challenging you. But that is maybe God challenging you, and it's just not something that you can control. So I guess you just take it one day at a time if it if it does happen. Yeah. But yeah, I hope that I hope that doesn't happen to to either of us. Yeah, I hope that doesn't happen. I mean, it happens to people, but yeah, that would be that's one. Like one of the darker things I can think about happening. Yeah. Uh, that or like being coming like crippled and being coming like in a wheelchair and not being able to move. Those are a couple of things that I'm like, yeah, those would be very, very challenging things. Yeah, they'd be very challenging. <laughs> I think if I did have a child with with severe disabilities or health issues, I think you'd learn a lot from them about yourself. I think there would be an eye opening experience. I don't think it would be a bad thing. Yeah. As much as it would be at the start, you'd be so mortified by it. I don't think it would be a bad thing. You'd find, you'd, you'd survive. Find something about it. Yeah, that, you'd survive. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So CEO of Testosterone is obviously the name. That's my name. I'm curious, your top three. And did in the past, did you get like tests done to see like based on what you implemented, how your levels changed? Yes, yeah, so I did get tests done. And then the last time I was tested, I was 986 nanogram per deciliter natural. And that's only in using natural supplements. Only natural supplements, yeah. What was it? Did you have a baseline before you started messing with it? When I first started, yeah. I was high 300s. And that was, but that was years ago. Now. Was that with like really bad diet and sleep? That and was things? really bad diet and sleep. I was living a very sort of suppressed lifestyle, a nine to five lifestyle in sales uh, with the, with the bad processed foods and not training so much and feeling well, a little bit down. Why did you get the, why did you get the, uh, the tests done at that point? Because I felt awful and I read uh, Tim Ferriss's book, um, uh, Four Hour Body, yeah. which I recommend anyone. Have you read that? Um, no. That's very, very good. I think he's kind of a bro science guy, but I loved him. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think he's a bad, bad guy. I don't gonna say a bad <laughs> word about Tim Ferriss. He's a hero. Of I don't mine. think he's bad, but I've seen some some breakdowns of like the science. <laughs> I don't I don't know how scientifically like accurate his his knowledge is. But. I love my bro science. So, uh, but Tim you were talking Ferriss about how you're, but you're, but you're also talking about how you're like against like all this biohacking and stuff, and he's like probably one of like the kings of that. Yeah, I know. I like watching it. I just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did, well, you did it to some extent. If you went from yeah, I did. So if you went from three something to nine something, maybe if you were like. Your your average is maybe six hundred, let's say somewhere in between, right? If you somewhere weren't completely between. shit, yeah. But what do you say like the top three things you did other than just? And I'm not saying these things aren't important, but I think everyone realizes sleep plays a huge role. Yeah, working out plays a huge huge role. Not having a shit diet plays a huge role. But aside yeah. from that, what would you say like top three things? Well, you did? No, number one thing is figure out what a shit diet actually is because I had a guy, um, he's called Luke Luke Hansen. Shout out Luke, good guy. He's got a YouTube channel about 250k. Uh, subs called Spook Luke. It's a gaming channel. Mm. And he was under the impression that he was on a healthy diet mm. from what he was reading. Yep. He was having a lot of the granolas, the, the yogurts. You yeah. guys call them yogurt. What do, you, what do you call them? Yogurt. Yogurt? Yogurt. Yeah. I don't know if that one sounds more <laughs> proper. I'm going to stick with yogurt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he was having a lot of that, a lot of the grains, a lot of the vegan bars, the energy bars, protein bars, um, stuff that people say like, yeah, this is a healthy diet. This is healthy stuff for you to be eating. Um, a lot of protein shakes, things like that. And he had destroyed his testosterone levels, destroyed them, non-existent, like a 150. Oh, God. And was feeling completely shit. And then he spoke to me about it. It was like, oh, I'm eating a healthy diet. I don't know why this has happened to me. I'm, I'm training. I'm eating a healthy diet. I was like, show me your diet. And we just went through it. It's just seed oils, seed oils, processed food, processed food. It, all stuff that can be put on the package is healthy, but it's really shit for you. Stay natural. Stay close to what is actually come off of the earth that you could go and hunt and kill yourself. So I like to eat just steak, steak and chicken, high quality chicken. Steak is preferable to chicken, but I understand not a lot of people can eat steak every day. Mm. It might cost them too much. Um, a lot of eggs, free range eggs that are not pumped with antibiotics and shit. And uh, I, I eat white rice as my sole carb most of the time. 80-20 uh, with most of my diet stuff. 20% of the time I do what I want. 80% of the time I stick pretty closely. Mm. White rice is good because if you look at the world, a majority of the world lives on white rice. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's, re it's relatively unrefined. Yeah. It's basic. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. It's good for your carb source. And that's pretty much all you need. Mm. A few vegetables here and there. Plenty of fresh fruit. Honey, if you want something sugary. Bang. Healthy now fats. you've got a good diet. Yeah, healthy fats. Healthy fats. Eggs, meats. Butter. You could add butter, avocados. Yeah. Like healthy fats. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that is the stuff you want. You do not want stuff out of a package. So when you look at that and then actually look at your sleep. Yeah, you might say you get good sleep. Are you getting eight or nine hours a night? Yep. consistently actually high quality sleep mm. if you are you're going to feel amazing on that diet and doing this and then some heavy leg training mm. uh, a couple of times a week some very heavy like really increasing your strength and your for your major lifts if you do that and then you need the sun because we we're meant to live in the sun so you need either a vitamin d3 supplement 
I used to take 10,000 IUs a day. That worked very well for me. Some people say that's too much. At, no, at least take uh, at least take whatever the regular dose is. I'm no is. doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm no doctor, so to figure out what at least it don't is be you deficient. should take. Yeah. But I, I took 10,000 IUs. It worked for me. You can do that if you want. Check out what you need to do. And cod liver oil. No, um, I fer yeah, fermented cod liver oil I took, which helped. Butter oil. And uh, that's about all you need a lot of the time. And I know there's actually some others I'm looking forward to experimenting with. Uh, the Tonka Ali. I have taken ashwagandha before. Yeah. It was in with everything else. So I don't know how much of that played a part, part with it. Yeah, let me actually show you something. All right. I'm going to grab it. Show me. So this is a new... And I'm only bringing this up because it's relevant. But this is a new supplement that... It'll be dropped by the time we are... We're live. We're it? live, right? It's called Gains Club. It's the brand you take a look. It's greens plus test. So right now, at least in the States, greens powder is super popular. Um, and I think it's a good thing, any brand you take, to have a lot of organic greens, even if it's powderized, because you're at least guaranteeing, regardless of your diet, you're getting micronutrients, you're getting fibers, antioxidants, things that prevent cancer. But in that, we added Tongat Ali extract, Ashwagandha KSM 66 extract. And these are things yeah. that if you listen to look at someone like... Uh, Andrew Huberman or Huberman, yeah, yeah. That, Huber, Huberman. <laughs> the Huberman, yeah. that he he says are some of the more effective yeah. test things. We also put some probiotics in there for like to increase the actual nutrient absorption throughout the day. Um, but the idea being that, look, if you're a guy, like why not take something like this every morning? You yeah, know? exactly. It's like a lot of bang for your buck stacked into one sup. I, I totally agree. I think it looks very, very good. I used to take one of these. How, how's this taste? I'm wondering. Well, here's the thing I'll say. How does this taste? Because I've had one of these that just used to make me puke so every it's a, time. So it's a green apple flavor that's really good. Send, send me some of that. To, I could do with that. I don't eat enough greens. To, can it, will that get into uh, to Thailand? You need to send it to me before I leave the country. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> before I leave the UK to Thailand. Otherwise, it's not going to get in. Okay. I don't think. Uh, someone, will, someone will snatch that. Oh, They'll yes. like that. They'll, they'll eat that. The water? Oh, right. oh, do you want to try oh, the yeah, taste? Oh, yeah, let's do a taste test. Uh, Julie, bring the other one that's open. Yeah. I'm going to be honest as yeah. well. No, no, please do. Yeah. It's a green apple flavor. All right. Oh, nice. So I you love can... these. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Then I'll mix it in there for you. I already had mine this morning, so. I'm no longer natural anymore. <laughs> After I drink this, I need twice the size. That should be good. Right. Yeah, I'll take that. There you go, sir. I'll give that to you, Julia. Does taste like green apple. So it passes the taste test. Well, I haven't been sick yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's much better than the one I had before, actually. Yeah, I think I had athletic greens. That's the really popular one. Yeah. I mean, I think they have a, the solid form. Obviously, they don't have like the added like male performance things that we've added in there. But yeah, that's you can't say it tastes good. It tastes good. I'm I'm just gonna get this down. All right, go for it. Rather than sip it. Yeah. A little whiskey, a little greens with green apple. It's a great day. <laughs> Feeling healthy. <laughs> Have my Red Bull as well. That's not good. I need to you got a whole it. mixture of nutrients oh, going yeah. in there. All right, so ready? I'm going to give you five words. Okay. And I want you to kind of like word association. Okay. The first word that comes to mind. This right? could be messed up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. The, the more honest, the Okay, better. okay. All right. Testosterone. What's his name? Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> He was all natty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ronnie Coleman, all natty. <laughs> all right. Marbella. Women. You see, have you ever seen a lot of women? I've been seeing women? some 10 out of 10s down at, on at that the, street, uh, man. At the Hard Rock? Oh, oh down at the Porto Benus, down at the Porto Port. Porto Benus. So the Hard Rock, we got not as many, but uh, down that strip, Porto Benus, I thought, wow. Yeah, this is a, top, top level. It's a good strip. Yeah. And luxury, decadence. Yes. Bangkok. Fun. Bangkok is just amazing. You just feel good there. It's so fun. Everything about Bangkok is fun. MMA. Discipline. Absolute discipline needed to perform in MMA. It would change your life. YouTube. No, creation, filmmaking. I was always very into films when I was younger, so 
YouTube for me is very much about filmmaking, I think. Yeah, and I find it interesting you, you tend to, uh, for based on our talks, he seems uh, to take some pride in the videos. And you, you like to plan them out. You don't just like yeah. to, just to throw anything up there. I actually love the crea- making, making films. And, and my end goal, well, I've, when all's said and done, when the money's been made and I'm chilling, figuring out what I want to do, I want to finance my own films, be an exec producer, so get everyone together on, on movies, action movies, or so, that sort of stuff. James Bond type movies. <clears throat> Absolutely. And do a couple cameos myself and a few stunts in there as well. <laughs> that's, the, that's hopefully the end goal, would be exec producer on movies. And who would you like to see be the next James Bond? Oh, yeah. I'd like to see uh, either Tom Hardy mm-hmm. or Tristan Tate. Yeah, I don't know if Tristan Tate can act. <laughs> I don't know if he can act. I think Tristan could act. <laughs> he he looks like he could do he's it. He's a smooth criminal <laughs> and he's a cool guy. And I think Tristan would just blow it out of the park. Tristan would be such a cool James Bond. Or Tom Hardy. I've always rooted for Tom Hardy. I, I like Tom Hardy. Is he British originally? He's British, yeah. Okay, he, so the accent, he has the accent. He's got the accent. He's cool as fuck. I think he would make the perfect Bond. I think, unfortunately, they're coming away from that now. You think, think it's going to be a feminine type of guy? I think it's going to be fucked up, to be honest with you. I don't think it's going to be good at all. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully someone can, can was turn it, it around. It was but. like the new Batman was uh, like... Tim Buffet, and he's he's a good actor. I, I actually didn't mind the new. No, Batman. no, I liked the new Batman. Yeah. It was more actually dark and masculine. Yeah, like the actor that they cast was a little bit. The Batman is typically a very masculine looking man. Yes. Yeah. It, well, they have Robert Pattinson. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was Robert Pattinson. Yeah, it was Robert Pattinson. It wasn't Timothy Chalamet. Oh, but no, but Robert Pattinson's he's a G. I, yeah. I, I have nothing bad to say about the new Batman film, but yeah. the Bonds, well, just with the way the last one went out with Daniel Craig. And the way it seems that it's going, I think they could ruin an amazing franchise, but I hope they don't. I hope they go raw and gritty and, and, and that's what they go for. And yeah. they don't get scared. In the, Batman, the way the new Batman was yeah, more gritty. I'd love to see that. Yeah. A, a, like a get back to Casino Royale level of gritty. Or, or Skyfall was very good as well. Um, but the new Bonds, I'm excited. Maybe I'll be James Bond one day. Tom, Tom Hardy's one of the, the lookalikes I get. I've, I've, I've been told I look like him, so oh, I'd yeah. love to see, Maybe I'll be the new Bond. Hey, yeah, we can maybe, compete. maybe we can be the new Bonds. <laughs> the new Bonds. If any Bond <laughs> producers or anything watching this, than me, I me. need a few years before I do Bond. Yeah, I'll do the next one. You got the one after that. I'll get the Aston first. I need to learn how to drive <laughs> the Aston, and then, and then I can become Bond. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to link your, uh, your YouTube, your Instagram below. Awesome. What else do you just want to let people know about? I know we we briefly talked about your program. We can link that as well. Yeah, check them out. If you're uh, if you're making under ten grand a month and you want to learn to get your mind and body right, travel the world, work online in in sales, selling other people's stuff, so you have none of the hassle of building your own business. You want to get into sales and learn how to do that. We have a program called the Ten K Accelerator. It's about five hundred bucks. You get in there. You've got a professor in there as well to help you literally find an online sales job. If you do everything we tell you to do and you don't find an online sales job or start making money with the program, you get your money back so there's no risk. Check that out. If you're over 10 grand a month, you want to hang out with guys around the world that are on the same mindset, you want to sort of do the fighting, you want to become a really elite version of yourself, then New Elite, our network, hit one of the links under my videos and apply for that and we'll start chatting with you about whether you're a good fit. And that's, it. that's everything. And thank, thank you for having me on. Jack Hopkins, CEO of oh, Testosterone. I appreciate it. Let's go, uh, let's go hop in the ocean. Let's and go train. hop in the ocean. Let's beat each other up. <laughs> <laughs>